Hello and welcome to another Facebook Live. If you've never watched us before, we are here to help you improve your English, have a bit of fun, and <laughs> learn with us. So, <laughs> my name's Craig. I'm from the website mansioningles.com, where we have free courses and material to help you with your English. And also, we have a podcast that you can listen to at inglespodcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And with me this week, I'm pleased to introduce Lynn from Put It Like This. Hi, Lynn. Hello, Craig. Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm fine too. Thank you. I'm having a nice week this week. For people um, watching, I don't think any, anyone's joining us yet, but for people watching the replay, why don't you tell them what they can find at putitlikethis.com? Sure. Well, at putitlikethis.com, um, that's my website. And I tell you about the different kinds of online classes that I offer. And um, basically, I tailor make the courses to the needs of each individual students. Most of my students, I do do small groups sometimes, but most of my students are one to one classes. And they have specific needs. So they might want to prepare for an exam, or they might want to learn how to maybe they're English teachers, and they want to be more confident with their own English in the classroom. Um, I also offer some teacher training. I do business English, lots of specialities. So if you want to have a look, look at putitlikethis.com and you can see some of the things, the areas where I specialize in. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting people. Uh, now people are joining us. Hello to Marisol. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Christine, how are you? Hello. And Hema's here. Hello, hello Hema, how are you? And Fabiana was the first one. You missed Fabiana. She was oh, she Fabiana. was right on time at eight o'clock. Well done, Fabiana. <laughs> Good afternoon to you too. Mm -hmm. And Norma from Mexico as well. Hello, Norma. <laughs> Great to see you all here. Um, Hopefully more people will, will be joining us soon. Mm -hmm. This week, we're talking about a British culture quiz. Um, what do you know about the UK? So if you've never played a quiz before, in Spanish, I think you'd call it, if you're a Spanish speaker, un trivia, un concurso de trivia, a trivia quiz. And we've got a selection of questions for you based around British culture. Mm -hmm. And this was in response to the special request of... Rafa? Ooh. Rafa, that was it, Rafa from Cordoba, isn't it? That's Rafa's right. from Cordoba. And Rafa, a couple of weeks ago, said, can we have a quiz? So, <laughs> so we thought, right, well, we'll try and make a trivia quiz, a British culture quiz. What do you know about the UK? Right, but there's no prizes, there's no money, there's no jackpot. <laughs> no, under, under Spanish law, we cannot offer prize. Actually, that's not true. That's a lie. We don't have any money. <laughs> we don't have any money to give you. So no. you're just going to play for the pride and joy of knowing the answer. Yes, about and, British culture, and of course the um, the the pride in and the the English practice of listening to to Craig and I telling you fun facts. Have you got the word fun fact? Fun fact, right? Now, a fun fact is a fact that is just for fun. It's not going to make you more intelligent. It probably won't make you get a better job if you know these fun <laughs> facts. But they are trivia. That They're trivial things. They're things that are not important. But, you know, sometimes it's good for flirting, isn't it? Having a fun fact that you can put exactly. out in a conversation and you can impress the people around you. <laughs> and we can also... All, we're at, whoops. That's easy for me to say. And we can also say that some of this information and some of these questions are quirky. Um, what's the best way to explain quirky? Because I'm not sure what the Spanish word would be. Unusual, um, strange, odd. Uh, odd, strange, uh, a little bit interesting. weird. Interesting. Very, very, it's not mainstream. It means right. also it has this idea of being a little bit sort of alternative, a bit, it, it's not common knowledge, it's a bit weird, it's a bit unusual, quirky, uh -huh. quirky facts, that's, the, that's the, the kind of things that we're doing. And before we start, I have to say, we take no responsibility for being accurate. So we have to put a disclaimer at the beginning. 
<laughs> because I saw, I saw Craig and I have prepared the questions. Craig has done 10 and I have done 10. And I saw one of your questions, Craig, and I think you've got it wrong. So I'm going to really? argue with you when you put that's, your question up. That's interesting. I look forward, <laughs> I look forward to arguing with you about that. Um, so the idea is we're going to put some questions on the screen. Um, some of them are multiple choice, so you can choose A, B, C, D, and some of them are open questions, and you need to write the answer, what you think is the correct answer, in the chat. We'll wait a few seconds, 30 seconds or a minute, and then tell you what the answer is. More people are joining us. Lovely to see you all. Betty, Felipe, Andrea, Joel, Berta, Rigoberto. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. And Graciela, Andrea, Andrea, sorry. Thank you very much for being here. Shall we start with the first yes. question? Uh -huh. Well, okay. I'm just going to ask a fun fact before we start. Where is Hidalgo? I can see that Rigoberto is from Hidalgo. Is that in Mexico, Hidalgo? I'm not sure. But tell I'm us, sure what, tell us tell which us. country, Rib Rigoberto. Tell us which country, because we don't know. And I want to know the country where he'd... I, I know the name Hidalgo, Hidalgo. Sounds I've never heard like of it, a, so it sounds like something from a Western movie, from a cowboy and Indian movie, don't you think? Yeah, it sounds very Clint, exotic. Clint Eastwood riding, yeah, across going to Hidalgo. Uh -huh. It sounds super exciting. I want to know where Hidalgo is. <laughs> right. Okay. Anyway, from Mexico to the UK. So all of these questions are UK based, culturally speaking. And our first one is here. What's in a shepherd's pie? Is it A, shepherds, B, pork, C, lamb, and D, beef? What is in a shepherd's pie? If you know the answer, please write it in the chat, and we'll give you a few seconds to think and write. Mm. Do you know what a shepherd is? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and to remind you, if you're not sure about the meat, pork comes from a pig, lamb comes from a lamb, a, a baby sheep, and beef comes from a cow. What would you find in a shepherd's pie? While we're waiting, do you like shepherd's pie, Craig? That is the only thing I can cook. Oh, really? Uh -huh. I do I do cook, I think, a good shepherd's pie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh. Well, you have, have to, to cook, invite me. You haven't made I'll me have a to cook pie. one. I'll have to cook one for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not really something for the summer, and it's getting very hot in it the is. northern mm -hmm. hemisphere. Of course, people in Argentina, Chile, you're going mm -hmm. into winter now, but here it's getting very hot. We've got some answers coming in. Mm -hmm. Christine says lamb. Andrea says lamb. Um, uh, B, pork, says Felipe. Mm -hmm. And Gemma says C. Yeah, I think lamb is, lamb is the popular choice. Uh -huh. Is lamb that the right answer? Is, Lamb is also correct, yes, ah. because <laughs> shepherds look after sheep. So lamb is in a shepherd's pie. You can make something similar with beef. Because mm -hmm. that's the way I make a shepherd's pie. I make it with beef. <laughs> do you know what it's called? No. Oh, a cottage pie. A cottage pie. Well done. That's right. If it's, a, if it's beef, it's called a cottage pie. Uh -huh. Maybe we yep. should describe to everybody what it is, because maybe a lot of people have never actually eaten it. Do you, do you want to describe how to make it? <laughs> I can describe how to make it. So you, you take the meat, you fry the meat with onions and spices and some secret sauce that I'm not going to tell you. And you cut up some vegetables, usually carrots, and you can put in some garlic. Um, you can put in other vegetables too. And then you bake it in the oven with potato, mashed potato on top. So you have two layers, dos capas. You have the potato on the top and you have the meat and vegetable underneath. And another secret that I will tell you, if you mix some cheese with the mashed potato and sprinkle some cheese on top, it goes lovely and crusty. And it makes it even better. Oh, you've made me hungry now. I want to have a shepherd's pie. <laughs> okay. Lessie has never eaten a shepherd's pie. Then you have never lived, Lessie. Mm -hmm. And if you come to mm -hmm. Valencia, I will make you one. Mm -hmm. And Graciela says cottage pie, pastel de carne in Spanish. Yeah, more or less. 
Graciela, um, yeah, pastel de carne. British people fine. generally, uh, and, and also Anglo-Saxon in general, so not just British, but people from New Zealand, Australia, we like pies, uh, P-I-E's. And it's, it's very... It's it's very common, I think, isn't it, in UK yeah. to have pies. And we have sweet pies and we have savory pies. And um, can you put that in the in the chat file? Because maybe they don't know that uh, that those words. Sweet, so something that's like sugary. So things like apple pie, I'm sure you've heard of that. Apple pie, fruit pies. And it's always got pastry on it. So pastry made with flour and butter. And um, and it baked in the oven. So we have sweet pies, and then we have savory pies, and um, they're very very common in Britain to eat, like different types of meat and different types of fillings in a pie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're a nation of pie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and of course, steak and kidney pie. Maria says, yeah, of course, which very is the, one of the very popular one. Right. Next okay. question. Next question. Right. This is my question. Right. Which three British women? Women, that's us, you know, Craig. Women, yep. power to the women. Women, women, which, I'm women, <laughs> women, <laughs> which, <That's> women, <laughs> swimming, women. <laughs> which three British women have held top leadership roles in the UK for a combined total of 143 years and counting? Which now that phrase and counting means that. Some of them are still leading. They're still in the leadership role. So it's 143, but it's not finished yet. Right. Now, these are three British women. I will give you two clues. One clue, I am not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe leadership role? What's a leadership, leadership role? role? So this is, this is a job or a, a, a position where you are a very powerful leader so you have a lot of power in your hands over the government now like I am Hillary getting... Clinton in the US exactly uh -huh. now I can see that for example I'm getting people are saying Margaret Thatcher but I want to have the three women who together have ruled the UK for 143 years and counting Christine Christine says, Margaret Thatcher, Theresa May and Elizabeth II. Well, Elizabeth II has been on the throne for over 60 years. Margaret Thatcher was on the throne for about 10, wasn't she? I think. Or 18. Or no, no, sorry. The... Margaret Thatcher she, was 11. She thought she, thought she was on the she throne. Thought, no, she, she wasn't was on the throne. She was the prime minister. Margaret Thatcher was 11, right? Margaret Thatcher, correct. Mm -hmm. The Queen, Queen Elizabeth, 69 years, wow. right? So that gives you 81. And where are the other, where are the other 43? Where are the other 63? 63 where are years. The it's, 63 it's not, it's not Theresa May, is it? That's Rafa not says, Theresa so. May. She's not that. Diego says King Arthur. If you don't realize, King Arthur was a man. He did wear Diego. a skirt, though. He did wear a skirt. <laughs> well, he wasn't a woman. <laughs> but he wasn't a woman. So who is our other powerful woman in Britain? Who is the other powerful woman? Come on, guys. Think 63 years. It was in the last, last century still. I difficult think. question. I think that's is quite it? a difficult question. Do you think that's a different one? Elizabeth I, Elizabeth II, and Margaret Thatcher? No. I don't know about Elizabeth the first. Victoria, well done, yes. Heidi. Well done, Heidi. Yes, well done. It was Queen Victoria. So Queen Victoria was on the throne for 63 years. And mm -hmm. I think she finished just before the end of 18, just before the end of the 19th century, didn't she? Queen yep. Victoria, 1890 mm -hmm. something. Yes. And then we had another queen, which was Queen Elizabeth, really fairly quickly afterwards. And she's been on the throne for 69 years. Mm -hmm. And then we had, of course, Margaret Thatcher. So you cannot say that Britain is totally patriarchal, can you? We've got no. some powerful women in there. Yeah, no? you certainly have. Mm -hmm. We have, yeah. Apart from them, there's me as well. I'm powerful. And, and there's Lynn. <laughs> 
<laughs> Next question. Mm -hmm. Literature. We're going over to literature now and Harry Potter. So mm -hmm. how many Harry Potter books are there? Are there mm -hmm. six Harry Potter books? Seven, eight, or maybe if you don't like Harry Potter, too many. That's another <laughs> option. <laughs> but, six, um, seven, eight are too many. <laughs> <laughs> how many are there or how many have been written and also I think made into films, if I'm not mistaken? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of them were made into films. Mm -hmm. But I think one of them was made into two films. Ah. So Written, of course, of by the... mm -hmm. J.K. Rowling. Rowling. Mm -hmm. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Um, Not really. I, I oh. mean, I read I read the books. I've, I've seen mm -hmm. most of the films, not all of them. I think I've seen three or four of them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, they're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I admire her as a writer. But um, yeah, I'm not not a big fan. Mm -hmm. So we've got some answers coming in. <laughs> D D six C says too many for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> eight. Oh, that's uh... yes, Rafa. This is your trivia idea from last week that we've got some yes. trivia questions. For oh, you, Rafa's so. joined now. Well done, Rafa. Hello. If yeah. this class doesn't turn out to be very good. It's Everybody your blame Rafa. Rafa. <laughs> so do you want the answer? How many books were there? Seven is the answer. So B. And if okay. you're doubting me, I will tell you the names of those seven books, which Lynn probably knows off by heart. Off by yeah, heart means um, from memory. Mm -hmm. So Philosopher's Stone in 97, Stone. Chamber of Secrets in 98, Prisoner of Azkaban in 1999, Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince in 2005, and the final one in 2007, Deathly Hallows. So which one was made into two films, Lynn? The Deathly Hallows, I think. Okay. Because it was such they, a long Because of the money. Mm -hmm. ah, I, think, I think it was, but I might be wrong. But, you know, mm -hmm. I told you, disclaimer, don't believe me. <laughs> Okay. Diego's asking if is it true there's a double of Queen Elizabeth? Um, what do you mean by a double, Diego? Do you mean someone who goes out in public so that she's not in danger? Um, mm. Probably there is actually. Yes, I would think I would say there is a double, at least one. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think yeah. that they're, they're sometimes if yeah if they're in a car or in public or there's maybe a suspicion that they might be in danger? Uh -huh. I think the prime ministers and the queen. And the important people have doubles, I think. Yes. Do you have Def a double? Definitely Craig? in America. Uh, maybe you're talking to him now. Maybe it's not really, really? me. Are maybe you this not the is... real one? <laughs> Ask me a question. <laughs> maybe it's not me. Maybe it's a double. <laughs> okay. okay. Next question. Mm -hmm. Next question. Then. Have you got it? Yep. Right. So this is an interesting one. This is a quirky fact. Which language that was not English? was the official language of England for 300 years. Was it A, Norwegian, B, Gaelic, C, French, or D, Welsh? I had to think about this. This was difficult. I really had to think about Did this. Did you? Uh-huh. Yeah. This is a really it. quirky fact. I tell all my students about this. Mm. This is very important. This is where we get phrasal verbs from. Yes, we Well, do. we don't get it from, but then it explains a lot. Right? Christine's gone so, for Gaelic. That's my uh -huh. That was my initial response. Um, mm -hmm. Heidi's gone for C. Felipe's French. Rafa's mm -hmm. French. And Hemma's C. So it's um, between Gaelic French. and French. Uh -huh. Gaelic, French, Gaelic, French. Alonso, Alonso sounds is, very sure. He does. He said it was French. It was French. It was French. <laughs> and you're right, Alonso. You're right. It was French. <laughs> yes. Sorry. And so the do you know that do you know the story, Craig, about French? So it was um, William the Conqueror. William the right. Conqueror was a French king, and he invaded Britain in 1066. And then from the point when he invaded. For 300 years, the language of the court was French. So all the aristocracy, all the rich people were French. 
And the language of the church, of course, was Latin. Now, in those days, not many people could write. And the people who were not in the aristocracy or the church, they all spoke English, old English, which came from Danish. There was a lot of Danish in that as well. So there was a lot from, there was a lot, it's a Germanic, mixed met, yeah. uh, Germanic language. And in, um, and then of course the court, they were the rich people, they were the literate people. So everything that was written in, 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 at that time in England was either written in Latin because it was from the church or it was written in French. And that's why English is such a wide language because you're probably all frustrated because you think, why do they have phrasal verbs when we have a perfectly normal verb that sounds like Spanish? And that's because we have Latin based verbs and we have phrasal verbs. And the Latin-based verbs are the ones that sound like Spanish ones, but they are formal English. So they're often used in writing or when you want to be in a very formal situation because that's what the French used to use. But all the language on the street is phrasal verbs. It comes from the Germanic base. And even though it's, we stopped speaking French, in completely the kings stopped speaking French in the 1400s, yeah, I suppose, 300 years, mm -hmm. 1066, 13 something. They stopped doing that. It still continued. So this is the really frustrating thing for you all because when you read written English in newspaper articles, often you read formal English and you think, ah, oh, I can understand English. And then you go to England and you hear the people on the street and they don't speak like that mm -hmm. because they speak with lots of phrasal verbs. So, yep. but the good news, not for you, but for us, is that this keeps us in a job, doesn't it? Great. Yes, that's <laughs> right. That's so we're really happy that phrasal we're verbs super exist happy. <laughs> because we can teach you phrasal verbs. So, you know, we'll just keep working. Yeah, just keep working. English never stops. <laughs> okay, now let's bring down the level of the culture to my level <laughs> and make the, the culture a bit more kind of from the street. What would you do with bangers and mash? Would you A, set fire to it, B, wear it, maybe it's an item of clothing, C, eat it, or D, play with it? Have you heard of the expression bangers and mash very very common where i come from in london mm -hmm. so what would you do with it mm -hmm. choose an answer and write your answer in the chat and if you were paying attention if you were paying attention the word mash has already been used on yes, this program mm -hmm. rafa has got a <laughs> french exam uh, b2 on friday good luck with that rafa I hope oh, we can't well help you. you with that, though. We can't help you. We just say that we've got French words in English, but I can't help you with your B2 in French. <laughs> je, ne, je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais pas. <laughs> um, Rafa's gone for A. Where's the question? Mm -hmm. I've lost it. Uh, the Rafa's question gone was bangers and mash. A, bangers and mash. I think the thing you've got on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh -huh. So set fire to it. You're thinking of Guy Fawkes night, perhaps? in november mm -hmm. where we have fireworks and burn the guy uh -huh. that's a good guess um felipe says c because i cook really well no i don't cook really well i can only cook one thing uh -huh. so I, I don't cook well at all christine uh, says she hasn't an inkling lovely word christine <laughs> can you put that up to show them i haven't an inkling which means i have no idea <laughs> No I idea. I haven't the slightest idea. Mm -hmm. yes. Lovely. Well done, Christine. Uh -huh. And um, the answer is you eat it because bangers is slang or in formal English for sausages. And mash, I said before, mashed potato, when you boil potatoes and mash them with a little milk or egg yolk, la yema, the egg yolk, it makes like a, a, a mash that's very light. And that's a very common dish 
Um, I don't know about the north of England. Do you? Would you oh, eat that course, in the north? Of course, of course, yeah. of course. Bangers and mash, bangers very and mash. And I can tell you because my family lives in New Zealand now that even when I go to New Zealand, they love bangers and mash in New Zealand as well. It's very common on the pub food. You know, yes. if you go, if you eat in a pub in Britain, which is it's 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 good food, pub food, isn't it? It's, well, it's it depends. As... You have to you have to be careful which pub you choose. Yeah, it can be okay. good food. It can be good food, but it's sort of a little bit less formal than going to a restaurant if you eat in a pub, isn't it? It's a bit and more it's casual, cheaper. and it's definitely cheaper. And pub food is very very common. And uh, in, in New Zealand, in pub food, they often have. I saw bangers and mash on the on the on the menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's sausages. I think you all know what sausages are. They're meat, but the, you can get vegetarian sausages now too. Sal salchichas. And um, uh -huh. and mash is the mashed potatoes. And Rafa has said, "How have you just said yema?" Yema is egg yolk. So I'll egg write yolk. it for you. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised. An egg. Yeah, I was surprised that I've never put a yolk in mashed potato. I think I'm going to try it. Is it good? Yeah, it makes it really creamy. Yeah, it makes it lovely I and creamy. Ever put, I used to put butter and milk in mashed potato. Yeah, a little bit of butter, a little bit of egg yolk. But and egg yolk. Uh, I'll try and, egg yolk. And some cheese. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Egg yolk. So yolk is the yellow part of the egg. Uh -huh. okay, okay, next question. Mm -hmm. Next one. Now, you see, I, I am the cultured person. So this is my Definitely. question. This is really high culture, this one. Be careful. According to many foreign visitors, what is really annoying about English bathrooms? <laughs> so what do you all hate about English bathrooms when you go, or English or UK bathrooms when you go to the UK? It could be Scotland or Wales. So A, there isn't enough toilet paper. B, they have carpets. C, they have a lack of mixer taps. Now, mixer taps, when you have the taps where the water comes out of, um, obviously you can have a cold tap and a hot tap. Nowadays, it's very modern to have a mixer tap, which is one tap and you adjust the, the hot and the cold and the water comes out the temperature you want, right? So, is it a lack of mixer taps, meaning that they don't have mixer taps? Or D, is it scratchy towels? They are towels Scratch. that hurt you because they're, they're not very soft. Right. So now we'll see. Who, who has been to Britain and got really annoyed in the bathroom? <laughs> Hema is saying C, C, lack of mixer taps. Siam says mixer taps too. Graciela says carpets. Mm. Um, Tersi said carpets too. Francisco, Francisco says scratchy, scratchy towels. towels. Shall I tell you the answers? Well, Francisco, I think you need to go to a better class of hotel because <laughs> you can definitely get soft towels if you go to the right hotels, right? So it's not scratchy towels. But the mixture between B and C, I will accept as correct answers, right? Because they are the most common complaints that, that my students give to me after they've gone to England. Do they not complain to you about that? They do, yeah. But they yeah. also complain about carpets on the floor, especially in the toilets, because it's in a bit toilets. disgusting. You can't really clean properly if there's anything on the floor by mistake you can't really <laughs> clean the no. car it's difficult to clean it from the carpet and, and if I it's think, tiles it's easier yeah and i think when you go to the bathroom you think of being hygienic of getting clean and a carpet usually attracts dirt doesn't it so i i think that's the the thing that people yeah. often people in in the mediterranean countries they get very shocked that we have carpets it's very common in britain to have carpets in the bathrooms and in the kitchens and uh, and that's something that a lot of people think oh that's horrible and it's not hygienic and um i've lived out of britain now more years than i've lived in britain 
and I have to say I agree with you. I think I yeah, in my too. I prefer in the bathroom and the kitchen not to have any carpets. Me so too. that is something that uh, that is very common in Britain to have carpets. I think in Britain it's because it's cold and they think it's a sign of luxury to sort of step out of the bath or the shower onto a nice warm carpet. I think that's the thinking behind it. But practically, it's not so good. And the C answer, the lack of mixer taps, is something I, I agree with you. And I cannot understand how in the 21st century, for some reason, British people don't want mixer taps. I don't understand it because they're all around the world. <laughs> but for exactly. some reason, British people like to have separate cold and hot. And it's really one annoying. comment. One comment about carpets. Remember that carpet is the um, covering that goes all over the floor, from mm -hmm. wall to wall. And rug, R U G, is moqueta in Spanish, and that's smaller, just a square. So in some bathrooms, you also get rugs outside the shower, mm -hmm. on the side of the bath, or next to the toilet. So rug mm -hmm. and carpet. They're not too bad because you can move those and you can wash them in the washing machine if you have a bath mat. Exactly. Uh -huh. That's called a bath mat. But when you have fitted carpets, it's something something else. Mm -hmm. So that's quirky. Don't you think that's quirky? Yes. I that think we have globalization, quirky. but they still have the wrong taps in the bathroom. <laughs> There's no explanation for that. I have no, I have no idea why, but yeah, uh -huh. it's very quirky. Moving on okay. to another cultural question. The lion and the unicorn um, appear on the royal coat of arms. And I'm just checking what coat of arms is in Spanish. If you are a Spanish speaker, it's escudo de armas. That's what but a coat got, of arms is. We've got people is. from Germany here today, Craig. So, so how would we describe it? A coat of arms is like a symbol. And it's a usually a badge, uh, an insignia, and it's yep. got symbols in it that represent something. And it was very, tr it was very common in medieval times, wasn't it? In heraldry, uh, yes. In heraldry, in medieval times, with knights, and they had their coat of arms, and so it, they showed which group they belonged to, which country. So mm -hmm. in the UK, the lion and the unicorn are on the royal coat of arms. So the lion represents England. What does the unicorn represent? And your choices, um, two, two, two Bs, I've made a mistake there. A, it should be, is Scotland. B is Wales. C is Ireland. And D is the royal family. Mm -hmm. So let Here's me a little quickly uh -huh. correct. Let me quickly correct that and put that Scotland right. as A. So and while clearer. you're doing that, Sarah Lopez didn't follow me. And she wanted to know what is the answer to the question about the bathrooms. And it was both, Sarah. It was the thing that people find annoying are carpets and mixer tabs. Trick question. Had two answers. That's sneaky. I was so sneaky. we've got some answers coming in. A lot of people are saying Scotland. Um uh, Gemma's saying Wales, I think, mm -hmm. and Francisco, Scotland as well, and Francisca is saying Wales. The answer is actually Scotland. So the unicorn mm. is actually Scotland on the royal coat of arms. And if you follow uh, UK politics, Scotland's been very much in the, in the news recently because of um, the result of Brexit and possibly there might be a referendum of Scotland leaving the UK because they want to stay in Europe. So that's a very interesting thing mm. to watch if you're interested in politics. What's going mm. to happen to Scotland? Will they stay with the UK or will they break away and come back to Europe? So it's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see. What will the unicorn do? Uh, the and then you have to months? change the coats of arms, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, they have so to that change was, that more was... than the coat of arms. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was probably historically when the Scotland and England decided to collaborate with each other. And then they yeah. obviously made in the royal uh, charter, they made this symbol of the two countries equal. Because you see on the coat of arms, you haven't got a picture of it, have you? Because the lion and the, the unicorn are facing each other, aren't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're, they say they're represented equally. Mm -hmm. Okay, your question. Okay. 
my question. This is an easy one. Here's another easy one. So traditionally, what accompanies fish and chips? Is it A, salt and ketchup? Is it B, curry sauce? Mm, lovely. Is it C, ketchup and mayonnaise? Or is it D, salt and vinegar? Right now, I'm sure you've all heard that British people eat fish and chips because I think I've I've never had a student who didn't know what fish and chips was. Fish and chips is something to eat, obviously. <laughs> but do you know how to eat it properly if you go to Britain and get fish and chips? What do you put on it? Christine says salt and vinegar. Mm -hmm. I have to say you can put whatever you want on it, right? That I have to I have to say that. But what traditionally should you put on fish and chips? <laughs> And instead of a company, you can use the phrasal verb go together or go with, sorry, go, what goes, goes with, with mm -hmm. what goes with fish and chips. Mm -hmm. Or what do you put on? Now, we're getting a huge variety here. So people are saying A, B, C and D, right? We've got uh, all, all things. Yeah. And uh, you will be surprised maybe to know that the traditional thing to put on it is salt and vinegar. Mm -hmm. Vinegar is the very, oh, how are we going to describe vinegar, the flavor of vinegar? It's like really, Usually, really bad wine. Yes, bad wine. There you are. That's, <laughs> it has a very, very strong taste. Sometimes people put vinegar in salads. Yeah. Um, there's a very famous vinegar from Italy called balsamico vinegar. Yeah, that, that helps now because um, not everybody, we can't use the Spanish word. Vinagre, of course, is in, in Spanish, but there are other people here. Felipe says a glass of beer. Yes, that, that does go very well with fish and chips. Before well. you eat the fish and chips, more than uh -huh. one glass of beer is mm -hmm. a good idea. Mm -hmm. And then to have fish and chips, fantastic. Uh -huh. Do you like salt and vinegar on your fish and chips, Craig? I do. Yes, do I do. Mm -hmm. And eating them in the street out of paper. That's mm -hmm. how I remember uh -huh. them. Yes, I remember them like that, but you don't get them like that now. No. So, no. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay next moving one. on. Next one. Um, so some of you have been to the UK. I'm sure you've been in a supermarket. If you have been to the UK, which of these is not a supermarket chain in the UK? If you are a Spanish speaker, chain is cadena. So a chain would be different um offices or different shops of the same company so you might go to london newcastle edinburgh all over the uk and you see the same brand of supermarket that is a chain it's all over in many cities so which of these is not a chain tesco william hill asda or morrison's one of those mm -hmm. is not a chain of supermarkets mm -hmm. Now that's a very popular that's popular culture, isn't it? That's that yes. that is popular culture. <laughs> We're getting some answers in. Uh, Hema says um William Hill, so does Christine and Rafa. Oh well done. You've well, been to well Britain done. a lot then. <laughs> you know then that William Hill is actually a chain of betting shops to mm -hmm. bet money to gamble on horses, on dogs, on football. You go into a betting shop, and William Hill is a betting shop mm -hmm. chain. So well done. Mm -hmm. No, Francisco, Tesco is a very, very popular supermarket in the UK, and mm -hmm. Asda is also very popular. Morrison's is popular, but it's more expensive. It's a little more kind of upper class. But mm -hmm. Asda and Tesco are popular supermarket chains. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, right. next one. Next one, right. So... If you go to Britain, you have to go to the pub because that's a very British thing to do is to go to the pub. Now, if you go into a pub in Britain with friends, the question is, how do you order your drinks? Do you A, sit down and wait for the waiter to come and take your order? Or do you B, sit down and put your hand up? Or C... Oh, hang on. <laughs> We've been cut off with my banner. See, it's because I made a very long question. <laughs> One of you has to go to the bar, buy all the drinks, pay for them and carry them back to your table. Or D, it's not there, serve yourself and pay at the end of the night. 
Should I repeat those? Because they're not all on the banner. Yeah, I'll try and I didn't notice that. I'll try and. Um... That's all right. So I, you've got four okay. choices. I'll explain again. So you're going to the pub with your friends. How do you order your drinks? Do you A, sit down and wait for the waiter to come to you? Do you B, um, sit down and put your hand up? Do you C, one of you from the group has to go to the bar, buy the drinks, pay for them, and then carry them all back to the table? Or do you D, serve yourself, like in a supermarket, can you help yourself to the drinks and you pay at the end of the night? Ha, I think everybody's been to Britain to the pub. Do you think? I'm trying to, yeah, I've got a few more words on there, but there's a limit on the text. Don't so, worry, yeah. it was a very long question, but everybody's got the right answer. It was C. So yeah. in Britain, it's a bit weird, I think really, isn't it? Because you, you come to Europe, where all of the times I've lived in anywhere, actually, not just Europe, Africa as well, and in Canada, it's much more comfortable when you go to the pub because you sit down and then a waiter comes and takes your your order or you have a waiter coming around in Germany and he gives you the beer, whether you want it or not. <laughs> <laughs> just gives you it. But for some reason in Britain, it's very uncomfortable. So yeah. if you go out with like 10 friends then one of you has to go to the bar and you have to push in at the bar and you have to, there's no queue. And I mean, everybody thinks British people are polite and reserved and we pubs, stand in queues, there. but not in pubs. So in pubs, there are all these people at the bar and you have to fight your way through. Then you have to shout your order and then they give you the 10 drinks and it's impossible to carry the 10 drinks back to the table. And so you have to get your friends to come and, and you hand one and you, you do a, a chain, don't you? Getting your drinks back to the table. And when each person in the group does that, that is called a round. So you say, my round. And that means it's my turn to do that horrible <laughs> exercise of going to the bar and ordering the drinks. That's your round. You pay. And then the next time you come back, then it's somebody else's turn to pay for the drinks and it's their round. But it's very uncomfortable, isn't it, really? It is. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it is. But uh, that's the culture. And that's what you need to know if you if you go to a British pub. Yeah, Let's so go don't sit one. and wait, otherwise you'd be thirsty all night. We're talking <laughs> about the patron saint of England. So who is it? Who's the patron saint of England? Is it St. Patrick, St. James, St. Michael, or St. George? And Rafa was talking about Sainsbury's before mm -hmm. um, when we spoke about supermarket chains. So... Products from Sainsbury's are also St. Michael. No, that's not true. Yes, it is. They're, no, St. they're products Michael? From, Mar from Marks and Spencers. Mar oh, Marks and Spencers. Of course. My bad. I, I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Marks and Spencers is St. Michael, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? A, B, C, or D? Mm -hmm. Christine's got St. George, St. James. Um, Hema's gone for uh, St. James as well, and so has Mar. The answer is St. George, who famously killed the dragon. St. George, the patron saint of England. So and try Saint to George, that. Uh -huh. I know that because St. George is the patron saint of Catharis, which is where oh, my, my okay. husband's from in Spain. So there are places in Spain that. that have St. George as well. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay. Mm. Next one. All right. So here we go. If someone in England says, come and have dinner with us, what time should you go? 12 to 2 p.m.? B, 2 to 4 p.m.? C, 6 to 8 p.m.? and Or D, 9 to 10 p.m.? What time should you show up for dinner? at an English person's house, if they invite you, what time should you arrive if they don't tell you a time? <laughs> <laughs> right, Francisco says six to eight. Uh, Francisco, Felipe agrees. Mm -hmm. Christine, six to eight as well, she agrees. Ma 
agrees. Six. Francisca agrees. Okay, so you all think it's it's C. Well, you're right, partially. Partially. Aren't they? Partially. You see, partially? even Craig, even Craig doesn't know this. I'm confused. Right? Well, first of all, you're right, because of course in Britain we eat earlier. Right. So most people would have their dinners in the evening between six and eight p.m. Yeah. Eating at nine o'clock is not very British, is it? To eat that late. No, too nine, late. Ten o'clock is too late. So yeah. most people eat dinner between six and eight. But if you're from the north like me, our dinner is at lunchtime. Oh, of course. And then you have tea. In and we evening. have tea in the evening. <laughs> But not yeah. the drink tea. Uh, no. You call it tea, but it's dinner. That's right. So if you're Food. from the north of England, like me, if I invite you to come and have dinner, then I'm going to be inviting you between 12 and 2 p.m. to have what they call in the south lunch. Correct? Yes. You call it lunch, right? But in the north, yep. we call it we're going to have our dinners. I'm having my dinner now. And in the evening, what we have in the north is we're having our teas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still use that language here. <laughs> so with my, with my daughters, we have tea, but we have it at Spanish time. We have tea at nine o'clock and we have um, dinner at lunchtime. But if someone says in your house, are you ready for your tea? How do you know if they're speaking about food or they want to make a cup of tea? Because you'd say, do you want a cup of tea? Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That makes yeah. sense. But you wouldn't say, are you ready for tea? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to geography now for our next question. What's the second largest English city by population? Now, I'm sure you all know that London's the capital of the UK. But what's the second largest um, English city? So that's not including Wales or Scotland, or Northern Ireland, by population? Is it Manchester, Cambridge, Birmingham, or Liverpool? Now, Craig, you cheated. You've changed that. because that was the, <laughs> That was the question where I was going to pick a bone with you. Oh, so there's, okay. a, there's, a, there's a, a, an idiom for you. To pick a bone with you means to argue something to pick yes, a bone I, i'm going to and i was going to pick a bone with you about that because you didn't have that question right in no, our I know. shared I, document <laughs> that's why i changed it then that's good <laughs> so you are so, right after all good <laughs> so we've got some answers coming in uh, raf has gone for birmingham hem has gone for birmingham as well liverpool says diego and francisco birmingham Christine's gone Cambridge. Yeah, that's why I included Cambridge, Christine, mm -hmm. because you hear a lot about Cambridge because of the university, because of the Cambridge English qualifications, but it's actually not. It's actually the smallest by population with only 158,000 people. Mm -hmm. The second largest city after London, now London has nearly 9 million people is Birmingham. So well done, Rafa, and well done, uh, Gemma, for getting that, and well done, Francisco. Birmingham has 2.93 million. That's nearly 3 million people. Manchester, 2.84. So Manchester's almost as big by population as Birmingham, 2.84. And then Liverpool has only 1.42 million. So... Mm -hmm half the size in population as Birmingham, which mm -hmm. may surprise you because, of course, Liverpool football team, the Beatles, Liverpool is always um, in the news. But Birmingham is the second largest. And British cities are actually not very big, really, when you compare like Mexico. Some of you are from Mexico. Yeah, when I say I mean, you have huge cities or, or Buenos Aires or things like that. But apart from London, our cities... A lot of cities don't make a million people. Yeah, yep. Newcastle, which is and Sunderland, which is where I'm from, they're two cities in the north, and neither of them make a million. They're all mm -hmm. under a million inhabitants. So then, there we don't have huge cities really, apart from London. And London's not that big, is it? With nine nine million, did you say? 
eight point nine. Yeah, nine million nine. in uh-huh. twenty nineteen. These are from twenty nineteen uh, uh-huh. figures. Yeah, and in comparison to other big cities in the world, I mean, they're very small. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have to speed up a bit, Lynn, to go a bit quicker because we've got quite a few questions and only about 10 minutes left. Well, skip the next question because that takes too long (laughs) to explain. Go to the British newspaper one. Okay, British newspaper one. Which of the following is a British newspaper? Um, The door, the frame, the wall or the mirror? Now, we were speaking uh, while you're writing your answer to that. We were speaking before and Lynn said that – the phrasal verbs tend to be more informal and a bit more difficult to understand, whereas the Latin-based words are easier because many are recognized if you speak a Latin-based language. For example, to postpone, posponer, you might recognize that, whereas to put off, the phrasal verb is not so obvious. Well, with newspapers, it's exactly the same. The more serious traditional newspapers tend to be easier to understand for language learners than the answer to this question, which is more for the working class and the language is more street language and the newspaper is more informal. And there you will find more phrasal verbs, more slang, more colloquialisms. So usually those kind of newspapers are more difficult to read than the Times, for example, or the Guardian that are generally more formal newspapers. So what's the answer? Which of these is a British newspaper? And Um, it's a mistake, isn't it, really? Because I should say it's a mistake. You know, if you really want to learn English, you should try to vary the different things that you read. And many English course books use articles from the Guardian and the Times, which is wonderful, but it doesn't help you learn informal Informal language. So if you really want to challenge yourself, it's not such a pleasant read, reading the mirror, personally, I don't (laughs) because it's usually lots of gossip and lots of, uh, yeah, lots of not very important things, lots of trivia, but it is it will expose you to a lot of common informal language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So go ahead. Sorry. What, oh no, answer? yeah, and yeah, that's I the answer. I, said, the I gave mirror. it, didn't I? I said the mirror. Most people mm-hmm. knew. Um, yeah, most people put the correct answer. So the mirror is a is a, a, a very common newspaper in the UK. Also the Sun, the Star, the Daily Star are common informal uh, mm-hmm. newspapers. Moving on quickly to the next one. Right. So according to experts, how often does the British accent change? Now, many of you often ask, where are you from, Lynn? And where are you from, Craig? Because you don't speak the same. (laughs) You don't pronounce things the same. That's very, very common in Britain. But how often does the British accent change? A, whenever there's a stranger around to make it hard for you. B, every 25 miles, C, from city to city, or D, never? I've just given away that answer I shouldn't have said before. (laughs) (laughs) Pay attention. (laughs) So A, B, C, or D, what do you think? While you're doing that, uh, Christine's asking, which of the newspapers would you recommend to learn phrasal verbs? I've put them in the chat, Christine. Yeah, the more informal ones. Um, They tend to be smaller, whereas The Guardian and The Times are very big newspapers. You have to open them. It's really difficult to open them on the bus, on the train. They're the formal ones, and the more informal ones are smaller, and they have lots of sport and lots of ladies with no top, like (laughs) new breasts showing. So they're not very serious newspapers, but they do contain a lot of informal slang, phrasal verbs, and colloquialisms. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, right. So we're getting a variety here. We're getting C from city to city, and we're also getting B every 25 miles. That's tricky. Miles is American, says Felipe. Uh, No, Miles is British, isn't it? (laughs) Well, British and American. uh, British and American, both. Yeah, Miles is like, it's not kilometers, yeah, but okay. 
Right, the answer is every 25 miles, apparently, according to... That was a fun fact, a quirky fact that I found out. That's and the pronunciation experts have have actually detected that the accent changes around every 25 miles, which is another reason why Craig and I will always have a job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially teaching pronunciation. Exactly. Moving on to a, a culture. I do have a culture question. Here's my culture question. Theater, The Mousetrap, um, is a very famous play. First performed in 1952. It's a murder mystery. But who wrote it? A, Agatha Christie, B, Charles Dickens, C, Arthur Conan Doyle, or G, G, <laughs> or D, George Orwell. So I saw that many years ago in the West End of London. The West End is the area in London where you go to the theatre. There are many shows and theatres. It's a bit like in New York, uh, Broadway, for example, where you'd see a Broadway show. So the West End is where you'd go to see theatre. Um, what do you think? It's uh, very, very common, and it recently started up again. Did they it? Started... I've never seen it. I've never seen it, but I know it because it's very, very common for British culture to talk about the mouse trap. The mouse trap. It was the yeah. longest. It went for years and years and years and years, didn't it? They uh -huh. stopped performing, obviously, during the COVID pandemic, but they've started again, I think, last month. They are now mm -hmm. showing it. Christine says, Agatha Christie, a very good guest. You're absolutely correct. She also wrote other murder mysteries, and mm -hmm. she's famous for that genre of um, plays. Yeah. Well mm -hmm. done. Agatha Moving Christie. Moving on. Right. Okay. Next one. What do you do with a Yorkshire pudding? Do you? Oh, you've really made it complicated oh, um, with C. <laughs> sorry. So C, forget him. It's A, wear it. B, eat it with sugar. C, use it to hide unwanted foods. Or D, eat it with meat and gravy. Have any of you ever heard of a Yorkshire pudding? Have you ever had a Yorkshire pudding, Craig? I have had a Yorkshire pudding. Mm -hmm. I because Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Yorkshire is an area of Britain. It's an area of England, and it's kind of a bit north. It's the it's it's further south than where I'm from, but it's 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 after the central England. It's the first northern region that you kind of get to, and the capital of Yorkshire is York, which is a beautiful city. If if you ever go, go and visit York. All right, but what do you do with the Yorkshire pudding? What do you think? People are saying a wear it. B, eat it with eat it with sugar. Mm -hmm. Graciela says eat it with meat and gravy. D. All right. So basically, none of you know. Well, the correct answer for me is C. You use it to hide unwanted foods. <laughs> Craig is Craig is Craig is confused now. Now a I'm Yorkshire confused. pudding. No, the I'm correct confused. answer is really D. It's D. But for me, it's C. <laughs> right, because. A Yorkshire pudding is a savoury thing. It's a little bit like a, it's, it's a mixture like of crepe, but it's made into a sort of round shape. And we usually eat it with roast beef and potatoes and vegetables and gravy. All right. So it's a very traditional and it's a very traditional meal that we eat on a Sunday, roast beef and Yorkshire puddings. And it's famous all over Britain, isn't it? Right? Roast beef yeah. and Yorkshire puddings. It's not just in Yorkshire. And in my household, when I grew up, my mother was a champion of making Yorkshire puddings. She made really big ones. They were this big. And the meal that I hated the most was the roast beef and Yorkshire pudding meal. And we had it every Sunday. Oh, it's lovely. How could you and hate it? No, I love it now. But when I was a kid, I hated it. And the Yorkshire pudding has like um it has like it's hollow it's hollow right so it has like a wall around it but the inside is empty and that's usually where the gravy is put and when i was a child i hated eating cabbage and peas and carrots and when my mum wasn't looking i used to turn the yorkshire pudding over and i used to hide all the food that i didn't <laughs> want to eat i used to squash it in the yorkshire pudding and then when my mum said finish your dinner i'd say oh, i'm so full but i've only left the yorkshire pudding and all the food was inside <laughs> and all the food was hidden inside the yorkshire 
would he? <laughs> How old so were you me, when you did that? Is, oh, I did that all through my life. I had big problems <laughs> with my mum and dad. I hated it. Was only I only started to like roast beef and Yorkshire pudding when I left home. Um, but for all my life, it was the one meal, like my children, some they didn't like fish or something like that, but I hated roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. But but now I love it. I do like it. Rafa's asking about gravy. Salsa, salsita. So it's uh, made from the juices of the meat. When you cook the meat, the roast in the oven, you get the juices that come out of the roast beef or the roast turkey or roast chicken. And then you make the gravy with some flour to make it thicker. And then you pour you pour HR, the gravy over the food. It's lovely. Right. Okay. Well, I think on. we're out of time now, Craig. We're up for time. It's an hour okay. already. Should we just yeah. do one more? Should we finish okay. with one more? Go on. Um, food again. We've got so many questions about food today. Who invented the sandwich? You know what sandwich means, but who invented it? The Dame of Baguette? The Earl of Sandwich, the Duke of Roll, or the Prince of Pasty? <laughs> One of those people <laughs> invented the sandwich. Did you want sandwich. to say pasty or did you want to say pastry? I think I probably wanted to say pastry. So let me go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't been spelling very well today, have I? You haven't. You haven't. Um, how do you That's why pastry? I think you're the double Craig, you know. You're not the real yeah, Craig. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the, the real double. Craig. The real Craig has gone on holiday. I can see this. I wish. <laughs> I wish. Okay, we only have a couple of minutes, so please write your answers um, as soon as possible in the chat. Many people are going for B, and you are absolutely correct. The Earl of Sandwich invented the sandwich. Well done. All Fantastic. Right. So um, I hope, hope you all feel we hope you all feel more intelligent after today's class. <laughs> <laughs> probably feel hungry after all those food probably questions. feel hungry that's right if you did enjoy this please let us know if you'd like us to do more of these kind of trivia quizzes or any other ideas that you or rafa might have for next time lynn and i are doing another facebook live in two weeks so um write down your ideas we will look at them after we say goodbye so we're going to say goodbye and before we do just to remind people who maybe haven't seen us before, um, my name's Craig and I write material for the website mansioningles.com, which has courses and lots of material for you to improve your English. We also have a bi-monthly newsletter, so you can also sign up oh. to receive free email newsletters on the website and listen to the podcast that you can find at inglespodcast.com. That's every week, and you can listen to it on the website or wherever you listen to your audio. Lynn? Mm -hmm. Yep, and I'm Lynn, and I'm from putitlikethis.com, uh, and um, I'm an online teacher of English, so I don't normally teach trivia. <laughs> I teach <laughs> serious English. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I do online classes, usually tailor-made classes. So if you have a specific objective that you want to achieve in English, could be passing an exam, making a presentation in business, teaching in English, if that's what you do. Um, I do lots of different things. Go to my website, putitlikethis.com, and then you'll see all the different types of English that I teach. Okay. Right. Right. Thank you for watching. Um, it's been really mm -hmm. fun to do this with you. Stay safe, have a good week, and I'll be back next week with Monica next Wednesday and in two weeks' time with Lynn, and we will see your ideas if you put them in the chat. So if you mm. have any ideas or you want us to repeat another quiz, just let us know. Okay. See you soon. All right, then. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.